Good afternoon, everybody. Um, this is Shane Gerlock reporting from sunny uh, Omaha, Nebraska. Very delighted to be with you all today. I uh, want to take a moment to introduce you all to a couple of um, guest speakers of ours. Shayla Weffer is a senior sales executive at Sojourn, and Estella Hale, the vice president of product at SHR. I'm delighted to have them joining us today. Excited for them to share with you all as they are kind of thought leaders on online guest interactions and travel behavior. Uh, Shayla, if you'd start, maybe just give us a quick bio, um, let everybody know who you are and what you do. Sure. Thanks everybody for joining us today. We're excited to talk about guest expectations in the online realm. Um, as Shane said, I'm a senior sales executive here at Sojourn and I work on the property solutions division. So I have the opportunity to talk to hoteliers every day, management groups, soft brands about um, their marketing strategy as it pertains to online, um, you know, what their major pain points are, what they're trying to solve for on a daily basis, and hope that we can help them do that. All right. Thank you. Estella, over to you. Thank you, Shane. I'm glad and happy to be here. Thanks, everyone, for joining. I'm uh, the VP of product at SHR, and my main responsibility is setting the strategic vision for our products. I oversee the overall implementation of it and hopefully the fulfillment of that strategy. And uh, um, similar to Shayla, also interact with hoteliers to really get that voice of the market into SHR so that it helps influence what it is that we're solving with technology. That's wonderful. I Really excited to have both of you here today. I'm, I'm looking forward to the insights and perspective that you guys can share. But for the uh, audience listening, I want you to know there is no free lunch here. Um, we're going to put you to work right away. This is going to be interactive. Uh, we do have a few polling questions that we'd like to start with just to gather some intel and some feedback from the audience as it will relate to our subject matter today. So we're going we're gonna to throw those questions up on the, the monitor here. Take just a few seconds. If you guys could take part and actively engage with these, we're going to use this information a little later on um, in the seminar. Ah, pretty strong answers. <laughs> oh, 50-50 Yeah. Mm-hmm. We have another question. There it is. Wow. Yeah, interesting. I wouldn't have expected such a strong showing in one category. Wow. And we have another? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and uh, jump in. Thank you for your participation on those questions. Uh, curious to see, uh, as we discuss those later on, how those unfold. But if we want to move on and through, the, um, through the seminar here, first and foremost, I uh, want to address why guest exp expectations actually begin and end online. Um, why are they such a big deal? I think that seems like a fairly obvious question to most, I suppose, but I have a hunch that there's more to the story than uh, what we see here. Estella, if you maybe would just kind of open uh, for us why these are such a big uh, influence in the travel sector. Absolutely. So, you know, to, to Shane, to you, to Shayla, to the audience, as, as you guys know, there's a myriad of places today where guests can find content. And the places for content such as reviews has multiplied. And add to that the fact that this content is guest generated, it just becomes highly impactful and influential. So it can be easy to see how, you know, with this content, with this highly influential content, uh, uh, you know, this can impact both how the, that point of decision of the guest uh, um, is impacted and even the point of the rate of that 
guest is impacted. So really looking at all of the places that they visit, oh, that we have a slide here, according to TripAdvisor, 83% of users will usually or always reference a review site and 53% won't book a hotel without seeing reviews first. So there's a myriad of places where they're finding this information. Through this journey that the guest is taking, there is a point at which a buying decision is made. So it is important to see the different places in which that content, highly influential content is reflected and what it looks like. That's interesting. I, I... It makes me think of Rotten Tomatoes, right? God love Rotten Tomatoes. It's the whole idea that anybody can offer up an opinion um, about an experience. Shayla, did you have something you wanted to share? I really just wanted to add that the, the interesting thing about reviews and um, is that you can review anything anywhere. So when you stay with a hotel, you're likely given the opportunity to provide feedback or review the hotel after you've stayed there. But you can also provide that feedback on TripAdvisor. You can provide that feedback on Yelp, on any travel meta site, virtually any OTA. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is the one thing, you know, when you, when you do an aggregate search for hotels in a specific area, they're likely always listed with a star rating of some sort. And a lot of that comes from the reviews that guests have provided. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. Um, when you look at the drivers of guest expectations, what should a property be focused on when it comes to setting or establishing guest expectations? And I think kind of a second part to that question is, ladies, are there components that you would say are more obvious or influential than others? I think there's probably the front runners and then maybe there's a story behind the story. Um, Estella, would you, would you maybe open on that? Sure. Think about the guest as that consumer of information, right? So the guest is consuming information through the different aspects of or points of their stay. Pre-stay, they're consuming information a certain way. During stay, they're still consuming information. It's just a different way. And post-stay, they're most likely posting information. So the distribution landscape has been evolving and it is not slowing down. And the guest is consuming information throughout the different stages of the shopping, buying, and staying. So looking at those different experiences and looking at those touch points as a guest, act as a guest from a hotelier perspective and walk through those different drivers of reviews with those three mindsets. If I am buying, where would I go to look at the review and how am I appearing? If I am in property, what am I looking for? And, and that feedback in that uh, uh, influential content. And then after I've stayed, that, that's a different aspect. That is more as a hotel, you're consuming what hotel what uh, your guests have posted about you. But you have to look at those three stages and then look at the driver of information for each one. So essentially, um, Estella, you know, you're, you're thinking about two mindsets, right? Or two worlds. So you, you as a hotelier or the person in property, but also having to kind of walk a mile in your guest shoes, so to speak, mm -hmm. and think about it about their experience. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. I think one of the, um, on the next slide, I think one of the places we really start to impact um, the expectation of a guest is truly through the images that you can show that guest through their path to purchase. So, a, being a picture is worth a thousand words said often is true for a reason because it can really tell the story for you and it is very impactful to your guests as you can see from the statistics here on this slide. When I'm talking to hotels about what they might want to put in front of a guest for advertising, which they ask, ask often, there's some useful tips that we provide that I think um, I'm going to share with you today as they may be helpful to you. If you're an urban hotel, room views sell. Because people spend the day in the urban jungle, they want to know where they're going to rest their head at the end of that day. So having a peaceful, calming room really helps drive um, the right kind of message to your guests, which is that this is a retreat from the urban jungle. However, 
If you're a resort destination, everything outside of the room sells. People want to see the white sands and the blue infinity pools and the pristine golf courses. They want to know what they're going to do on resort property outside of their room, which is likely where they'll spend their time. So think about how you can use images of your room views when you're in the city and your resort views when you're outside of the city. What's interesting about the, the slides here for the ads for the hotel on Rivington is the hotel in Rivington is actually selling both. Um, and they are in an urban setting, but I love that they've taken the time to do that because they are a high rise on the Lower East Side um, in New York. And they, can, you, from an, a room in their hotel above the third floor, which is pretty much everything, you can see for miles. The views are astounding. So they want you to retreat to their calming, quiet room, but they also want to remind you that from that space, you can see how amazing the city of New York is. But another way that you can show more than just one view in, in the ads that you see here from um, the hotel in Rivington is, to, is Facebook carousel ads, which really give the hotel an opportunity or the resort an opportunity to show a 360 view of the property because those carousel ads can house as many as a dozen images. So you can spend time highlighting your room, highlighting even your bathroom, because people do want to know if you have a rain shower, um, and going beyond that and highlighting the amenities that you provide, spas, restaurants, again, white sands, um, pretty beaches, beautiful pu pool views. So Facebook is another great way to get the right images in front of people who are looking to buy and really sharing that story through images. I think the big takeaway is images can tell your story, so invest. Spend the money on professional images. They will pay off in dividends in the end with, with more booking. Very good. So obviously we talked about the imagery, right? We tend to learn and we absorb um, media and stimulus through the images and through the eye. But Estelle, I think there's other ways that people take in information as well. Not everybody, you know, that doesn't do everything for everybody. Other people want narrative and, and maybe um, words to describe those things. Could you talk to us a little bit about descriptions being a driver of guest expectations? Definitely. And I think it, and I think it is definitely a, a needed component. It is, a, it is a needed component and a driver of a guest expectation because they want to, to see what it what they can expect when they get there. But you also look at content overall. Content is important and hotels spend a lot of time managing their content, the content that they have control over. Of course, the user generated content, they do not have control over because it's user generated, it's guest generated, so they need to be aware of it. But that one that they have control over, those descriptions become very important. So here's an example of, of one of our clients that, that is doing a great job with their descriptions. And it's, it's an important part of how they present the offering, how they can drive the expectation of the guest before they get there. So also in your description, bring up those differentiators that portray your property. You know your property and you know what your property sells, whether it is for someone that is coming for a getaway for many nights or whether that is somebody that is there for the great location and you know for a meeting that they will have nearby and they want to make sure they have a nice, clean, comfortable room to stay. And also, as you're thinking of these descriptions, look at what each channel allows. Again, the, the, as, as your property is distributed a, across a myriad of channels and the distribution channels allow a different amount of characters, et cetera, for content and description, if you can tailor your content based on that channel, then you can take advantage of what you can convey. And, and here in a bit, for, for all of the attendees, we're going to drill further into taking full advantage of what is most at your control, which is your own website and what an important platform that is, and how we know that the guests are visiting it. But I won't give more away. We'll, we'll get there. <laughs> Always good to have a little of a cliffhanger. I appreciate that, Estella. <laughs> uh, so we've talked about, obviously, the images. We've talked about 
descriptions, the narrative, obviously how they, I think, work seamlessly hand in hand and kind of uh, really formulate the, the guest experience. But I think there's one other really important element when it comes to the drivers of guest expectations. We've all probably been to websites, whether it's hotel websites or just retail websites, where your experience is like, wow, that was super easy to conduct business. And then on the other side, you've been on websites, sites like, I cannot believe how hard it is for me to actually buy a product here. Um, Shayla, if you could speak really quickly, just the simple functionality and how that influences and drives guest expectations. Sure. I think, and Estella, I imagine you'll have a word or two to share on this as well when it comes to functionality. But uh, keeping things simple matters in this particular realm, especially. Having a booking engine that feels like it's part of the website, like when you do hit that check availability or book now button, you don't feel like you've left the site you started on um, is very, very important. But also, you need, there are some things that I find super helpful, and I think Estella will agree and, and have some comments as well. But when you are in that search window on a homepage of a hotel site and you plug in dates, one of the easiest and most useful things to have available is a calendar view. I know that sounds like a no-brainer, but some, some hotels don't have that view. And it is like you know you're traveling the first week of May, but you're not sure the exact date. Then you don't have to toggle back and forth between your own calendar um, to review what those dates are for your travel. Conversely, if you come across um, unavailable space on dates that you do want to travel, you can quickly look in, at the next few dates that look free uh, for the hotel and for you. So I love the idea of easily having a calendar view available. I would also recommend that you can get to really digesting the room you want to, to book in less than three clicks. So you add in a date, you add in how many are in your party, and the check availability button is that third and final click before you're actually reviewing room rates um, that best suit the needs for your trip. So I think keeping things simple is super, super important, but, and, but functional at the same time. Estella, what are your thoughts there? I agree, I agree. And, and, and again, things simple but functional. Calendar, I think it's a, it's a great suggestion so that people can see, okay, when it is that I am traveling. Also, look at your booking engine, again, as a seamless experience, but go beyond the branding. You must have the branding. It must portray your property because so far, and what we've been talking about, and, and, and let's, let's take into consideration that hotels are working on all of this. They're working on their images. They're working on their content. They're working on relevant offers. Now we're at the point where the guest has come to that buying decision on the brand website. Again, efforts of that strategy are rolling. Now let's go into that booking path. So number one, branding. So the guest feels comfortable. They felt their booking with you. Number two, have that booking mask within the parameters that your uh, uh, technology allows readily available, such as calendar. We know the parameters that most booking masks will uh, um, are going to allow from dates, uh, uh, occupancy, uh, you know, if any other any other variable that, that you wish to put there. Then look at what else does your technology allow that can bridge any other step for the guest to do. For example, if you know what is the most typical lead time that someone has to booking, if you know that nobody's booking for same day, maybe have that default go to what is your most common lead time. Maybe not. It depends on the property. But just looking at some of the aspects of what the guests uh, uh, that are booking according to the channels that are booking and applying those to what the technology allows via variables, via uh, branding mass via whatever your technology allows it's a great way of making it easier to the guest and then extending it to see okay then once I get them there is there at any point am I giving a, a message where there is no availability 
And how can I avoid that? Uh, you know, can I support blended rates? Do I support offering an alternate property if I have more than one property? So again, just looking at that booking path and what you are responding the guest with uh, continues here. So just like you took the journey as a guest, looking at reviews, take the journey as a guest as you're trying to book. So again, we're, we're going from the shopping into the buying stage. Very good. So I think just as a quick recap before I move on, there's really, we talked about three main drivers, obviously the images, everybody learns and quite frankly, pictures like Shayla said, speak a thousand words. You can put yourself in pictures a lot of times, make sure that the photos that you're using are high resolution, but also um, highlight the property that you are in the market that you're in. I think the second one was descriptions. Make sure that the narrative highlights the differentiators. What sets your property apart? Why would somebody choose to go to your property versus a competing property? And last but not least is the functionality. I thought it was interesting, Estelle, how you said you could do all of this work to have the right images and to have the right narrative and the right description. Somebody gets excited, they get to your web page, and now they've got to run the gauntlet of booking, right? And, and it's all for naught. What a shame that would be if you lost that booking because you did all of this work and then they don't want to deal with the problems of the booking. You know, the reality of it is the most precious commodities to most Americans today is time. Mm -hmm. And the harder it is for somebody to make that conversion, regardless of how good the image is or, or how discreet right. the narrative, if it's hard for them, they're going to move on to something more mm -hmm. convenient. So thank you, ladies. Um, moving to the next slide, I want to talk really quickly now about just thinking about, we talked earlier about pre-stay, at the stay, and then post-stay. Let's jump, jump into the pre-stay. How would hoteliers exceed the guest expect, expectations pre-stay? And one of the things that we've heard a lot recently is that the, the guest experience goes beyond the four walls of the hotel, right? Mm -hmm. So many times you visit with a hotelier and they'll talk about that experience inside those four walls. Cause quite frankly, many times that's what they feel like they can control. But I think with the, the advent and the, and the growing success of online exposure, you can make a strong argument that the guest experience now goes beyond the four walls and how your property is interacting with those prospective guests. So Shayla, would you maybe just, kind of kick off the the importance of the pre-stay uh, interactions? Yeah. So as Shane alluded, you know, there's, we talked a lot about influencers. We talked a lot about the importance of reviews, the importance of good images, of good copy. Um, but how can you control the message when a traveler is starting or in her path to purchase? Um, my recommendation first would be that you invest in some programmatic digital advertising. Guess what, Sojourn can help you with that. But furthermore, let me tell you why I think that's important. Digital display advertising means that you can put an ad, a message in front of a user, a traveler who's coming to your destination, wherever he or she is online in her daily activity. So I call that push advertising. And that's because you're pushing a message to that user where they're not expecting it. But what that gives, how you can leverage that or the, the leg up that gives the hotel is that you are really having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with that guest through that ad. Rather than being a list of properties available in a destination when that user goes to an online travel agency or a travel meta site. In this instance, you are it. So take advantage of investing in some online advertising so that you can put your, the right message in front of the right person at the right time. But furthermore, you are controlling the message in that ad. So in many cases, this is the first point of contact for that traveler who's looking to come to your destination and, and you who can obviously give um, a great uh, experience when they do come to your destination. So you don't ever get a second chance to make a first impression, and this is your opportunity to make a great first impression. Let that ad tell your story. Let it influence that guest to go to your website. Let that booking come to you directly. I think we can all agree, especially from what we saw um, in the early polls, that we want people to be landing on the website and booking direct. I, I just read an article a couple of weeks ago from another marketer, who shall remain nameless, um, who said that his clients say 
a direct booking increases profitability by 18%. And why, how? Because by getting that person to engage with you, the hotelier, and putting and booking with you directly, the hotelier, that guest is now entering her information all in one place for you to have at the get-go. So now you can decide how, you can see how long they're staying with you, what kind of room they've chosen, how many are in the party, and leverage that for maybe a better user experience for the guest, which could increase revenue for you, the hotel. You could sell them um, a reservation at your restaurant, a spa package, a more amenities, but it does give you an opportunity to leverage that data on the front end because you captured it through the online booking. Additionally, maybe that's the last time you have to pay to, to acquire that guest because now you've created a great experience for that guest before they've come and stayed with you. You've exceeded their expectations. Then they stay with you. They love that experience as well. The next time they're coming to your market, they book direct without having to be influenced outside of that channel. So you can actually make, or that, that guest can have um, a monetary value greater than what the, the hotel booking is in and of itself. Interesting. Estella, you know, I, I think I want you to kind of do a little bit deeper dive. You scratched the surface a little bit earlier about the whole, uh, you know, website experience. If you wouldn't mind maybe drilling down into that a little bit more about why, um, why the value in a good website experience. You know, Shayla talked about um, the value of the, you know, material and the things that you put out there as far as the, the ads. I'm curious to get your thoughts on just the entire website experience for a traveler. Oh, sure. Absolutely. And, and, and just to go back to what Shayla was mentioning, I, th I think it is so relevant to, uh, um, you know, what we saw in the poll that almost everyone is using email. So I think that's good news. That's good news to our audience saying, hey, there's another way of engaging our guests that is not email. So that was great. For as far as the value of a good website experience, you know, as, as we mentioned just briefly earlier, your website is the best platform in which you can truly showcase your product. You are not constrained by the uniformity of a portal. You are not constrained by the uniformity of an aggregator. But this is one where you can add clear descriptions. It is a place where you can set those expectations for that stay. Uh, uh, again, that, that's the website in general. A good website experience makes the booking process seamless for travelers. So that good website experience, look into what they are searching, again, whether it's through the use of variables, whether it's through the use of the technology that your central reservation service, uh, um, central reservation uh, system allows for you to booking, whether it's a call to action, that clear call to action that can be a, a strike through pricing on a particular offer, what have you, it is the place where you can showcase your amenities, your location, truly your product, so that the traveler begins to create the expectation in which they will engage with you, and that it is the correct expectation in which they will uh, uh, engage with you. As we mentioned in, uh, earlier in the presentation, the, the guests are engaging with you on your site, but they're engaging on many other sites as well. So having a, a good website experience could make it that point of the decision making of staying at your property versus down the street, uh, again, which is an experience that, that can happen in, in a portal, or it can be a good experience of the booking, even when they've already chosen your property so that they can book there. Also, think of that of that value of the of the good website experience extending uh, throughout the different points of the stay. So, what information am I am I bringing to the guest as they're exploring the property, and then what information can I provide for those that are in property and they're maybe wanting some information while they're here? That's good insight. I you said something, Estella, that I'd like to go back to and get both of your perspective. You mentioned that. You know, it's not as simple as your direct website being the only offering out there, right? We, you know, our cup runneth mm -hmm. over these days as, 
as users and as travelers, we've got more data than we know what to do with. And matter of fact, we heard an article, read an article not too long ago that said an average travel will visit upwards of 38 different websites mm -hmm. before settling on their accommodation. And I don't, don't do a lot of gambling, but those aren't odds that I'd probably double down on at the boats. Um, I, would, I would be inclined to say that's really interesting when you pair that with the idea that first time website visitor conversions are less than 10%. So my question to both of you ladies, Estelle, I'll start with you is, would you have any insight or feedback for the audience about what the separator is between a good website and a great website when it comes to conversion rates, be it on the second time visit, the third time mm -hmm. visit? Because at the end of the day, let's be honest, that counts for revenue, right? That's what we're talking about here. Correct. Do you have any insights on that? And Shayla, I'd be curious to get your feedback as you've talked to hotels about that. Some of the some of the things are simple things. Uh, make sure your website is responsive. Make sure that your website is displaying correctly in whichever medium your guest is engaging you. They can be engaging you in multiple devices. Make sure that your website has relevant offers of what the guest will find, even if they're choosing your hotel, but they're seeing it in other mediums and other portals and other aggregators. And then again, it, things like good descriptions, good images, and that clear call to action. So if they are looking, it doesn't matter if they're looking at the room page or the spa page or the home page, is that clear call to action where from here, if they have come to a buying decision, can then make that clear call to action and then landing them in what is relevant using variables, using integration, using branding, et cetera. But am I landing them into what is relevant and going all the way into, and we'll talk about it more later as well, going all the way into then is that guest expected? You know, do I have an integration, for example, into my PMS? So if they booked just five minutes away from my property or if they booked two weeks away, you know, I have that tight integration so that guest feels expected. So really good website experience is engaging them where they are, allowing them to make a cross context reservation. They can start on a mobile, continue on the desktop, continue on a call center, what have you, a uh, 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 clear call to action, and then making them feel expected at their purchase time. Okay, yeah. very good. Shayla, any, anything you'd add? Not really. I, you know, I go back to that where I started, which was advertising, right? Uh, it, it, digital advertising is amazing, but you know, when, the likelihood of somebody converting on their first visit to your website isn't great. As Shane alluded, they want to check out the competition. They want to see what's around the corner from you. Are there hotels um, where they need to go that, you know, if it's a conference center or what have you, are there more than one hotel around the block? I think the importance of getting an ad in front of that guest when they vacated their cart is just as important as what they do when they come back to the website. And if you're not doing it, I guarantee you, the hotel next door is. So just because they visited you is not a guarantee that they'll stay. Get, so a retargeting ad that drives them back, calls them to action in that ad, which is solidified on the website, I think is also integral to ensuring that you exceed that guest expectations, but ultimately that you're given the opportunity to. Otherwise, the competitor might get that chance. Very interesting dialogue. You know, it sounds like both of them go seamlessly, right? You can do all the advertising in the world you want, but if to Estelle's point, um, the the conversion process, the booking process is painstaking, uh, it's all for naught. And vice versa, if they abandon, um, and you can go back and have that that strategic advertising to bring them back to a seamless process, all the more advantageous. Let's move on really quickly to the significance of seamless booking. We kind of touched on it there a little bit, but Shayla, would you maybe just kind of highlight yeah. why the importance of a seamless booking process? Well, I, I love that Estella brought it up because it is really important. Focusrite um, conducted a study that says that mobile now accounts for more than a quarter of OTA gross bookings and will rise to 40% by 2020, which is more than doubling in six years. Um, that is huge. And as I think we can all agree that our phones are practically an extra appendage to ourselves these days. We always have it with us. Um, 
whether our spouses, our children need to get to it. You've got to create a grocery list. You want to check the weather. That smartphone is really your way to stay dialed in online. Um, the example I think of is if you're a commuter and if you're commuting on the train, you might have 20 minutes on a train to do some research about where you're going to go next and where you're going to stay. And you're probably going to do it from a mobile device or a smart device. Now, maybe you'll book through that device, but um, I'm still of the opinion that, you know, the Wi-Fi might not be secure, and maybe you're going to take that data um, from that search and then book on a desktop. Regardless, what you need to have available on your mobile site needs to be exactly what you've got available on your, your desktop site. They need to see ease of use with checking the dates that they want to stay with you, um, ease of use and looking at the room rates. Again, having the right copy be visible, short and sweet, without them having to scroll with their fingers over and over and over again to get a full description of the kind of experience they can expect from you. If you're not, if you don't have a mobile friendly website right now, my recommendation would be to invest in one because that is where our guests are finding us these days. Very good. Estella, do you have any, any additional thoughts on that? No, com just completely agree. It, it is a continuation of your website. So not because it is provided by a vendor, uh, uh, does it not mean that it, that it does not, to the guest, represent you? So it is a continuation of your website. So all, everything that applied uh, uh, for that for that experience through to to have a good website experience has to apply to the booking engine as well. Okay. Agreed. Estelle, we just talked on this like really quick blur, but could you speak to like just the booking abandonment? I don't know if you want to call it a phenomenon or nightmare that hoteliers may face, but could you speak to just some of your experience and understanding of of this issue? Sure. Well, this is this is some figures from uh, uh, from a SCIF study in 2015, the the habits of traveler bookings, and and what's neat about here is, of course, to see that uh, uh, the abandonment and in, in, in directly in the hotel website is less than than airline and OTA. But in reality, is that conversion rates are are minimal. There's a lot of shopping. Uh, uh, guests are looking at a lot of sites and a lot of comparisons before they book. Uh, but I think this also shows that once they are coming to your site, there is there there's a better chance of that conversion versus again when there's just a uniformity of offering on on a portal or on an aggregator. So so your chance of converting there is is less. But you know, especially on the technology side, especially on the side for those of us that provide booking engine experience for hotels and that provided for very, uh, uh, very unique and proud independent hotels that want to display their brand on their site, it is something that doesn't stop. It is something that we have to continuously be checking where is the guest going and how do we add, how do we adapt? How do we bring that uh, uh, to the hotel as part of the booking experience? So, you know, it, it, on our side, we, we communicate to our hotels, whatever it is that we've recently added, whether it's a new feature, whether it's something that meets a need to the guest uh, on that booking experience and for them to adopt it. Sometimes it means that the hotel has to tweak a little bit their, uh, um, their distribution strategy or operating procedures. If it applies, I encourage you to do it. Whoever your vendor is, again, we're all striving to meet the guests where they are. The guests are expecting more uh, uh, interaction with, with the booking engine based on all of those predictive apps that they're using, for example, on their phone. So when these new features are brought to you by your technology provider, uh, uh, again, look at what is available to you, look at what can be adapted, what fits your property, and then if needed, adapt your distribution strategy so that you can continuously affect that, that booking abandonment. Because from a provider perspective, we are constantly looking at what can be done to influence it. 
Outstanding. Thank you for that uh, insight. Certainly something I know that's the front of most hoteliers' uh, minds. Let's move on to um, how hoteliers exceed guest ex expectations during the stay. You know, I think a couple of things that I would open with is, number one, we, we live in somewhat of an impersonal world, right? You know, I look at what means more to somebody today, get you getting an email or you getting a handwritten note. Why is that important? I think personal touch, adding personal touch points for a property today is really a differentiator. I think the second thing is value add. Don't underestimate the seemingly mm -hmm. little things, right? So if we could just kind of pivot and maybe Shayla, I'll start with you, just some of the things that you think a property could do um, to really separate themselves and, and really enhance and drive higher conversion rates. Yeah. So I think gone are the days of free parking as an amenity because today the modern guest wants to stay connected and wants to do so free of charge. Um, Hotels.com reported that 49% of business travelers and 25% of leisure travelers rank free Wi-Fi as a deciding factor when they choose a hotel. Um, to me, that makes absolute total sense. Uh, when I travel, I don't rent a car, I use an Uber or a Lyft or a cab to get to where I need to go. Now, when you're in an airport, somebody at the airport can guide you, um, maybe with a ride share to get to your destination. And free Wi-Fi is important to stay connected, not only to your, um, your business needs, but again, as a, as a mom of two, when I travel, I'm so excited for free Wi-Fi because I can watch something on Netflix that I maybe haven't had a chance to catch up on while I've been at home without interruption. So I absolutely understand why free Wi-Fi is the new great amenity to offer to your guests because people want to stay connected for a myriad of reasons. Excellent. Um, I know we've talked about mobile. It's, it, you know, listen, it's gaining momentum. It's gaining uh, relevance. Estella, can I maybe maybe ask you to speak to just uh, uh, some more mobile influence as it relates to people um, in stay? Sure. Uh, basically, think think of this as the even precursor or precursor to check in or or even after they've checked in. So again, as we started saying when, when we began the webinar, the guest consumption of data does not end with that confirmation email. They're still going to be consuming data about the property. So you know, you can have you you can run the gamut on in what you can do from a hotelier perspective, from a budget perspective, from the offerings that you have. So you can start with something again as simple as have a strong two-way PMS or two-way advanced PMS connection so that if someone booked on their mobile minutes away from arriving to the property, the front desk has that reservation and that guest feels expected. Uh, again, we're going to go all the way to concierge, but it can start with something as simple as making that mobile booker feel expected. Then it can continue with as the, as the guests are consuming information of your property during stay, again, going back to the tips about is your website responsive? Does your website have good images, good descriptions that can entice someone to visit a particular amenity of your property and that is rendered and rang well in a mobile device? All the way to uh, technology applications such as mobile concierge in which they can see local services, they can see apps during stay, again, Technology offers a myriad of ways in which the guests can be engaged throughout the stay. Depending on your property, depending on your offering, and depending on the tools that you have at your disposal, you can cater uh, uh, what that in-stay uh, experiences for the guest, all the way from being from feeling expected to being able to consume information, relevant information that you're providing to them, all the way to wowing them by offering them something uh, uh, that is relevant based on based on what they purchase for their stay. You know, it's really interesting, Estelle, to hear you say, talking about, so easy for us to think that all the work is done once we've got the, the booking. 
right? Mm-hmm. I think that's probably one of the biggest temptations and probably I would make an argument, biggest mistakes that a property or hotel you can make is like, oh gosh, we got the booking. Mm-hmm. I think there's missed opportunities there, right? It sounds like, you know, upgrading, personalization, um, you know, again, going back to this, this high touch, um, just really interesting to hear you call that out because I could see as a business owner how you'd be like, gosh, I did my job, I got the conversion or I got the booking. Let's move on to the next one. When there's probably more opportunity, there's revenue being left on the table, not only for that stay, but to Shayla's point earlier, think about the lifetime value of that client in a longer term lens. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. And and also take a look at that engagement based on where the guest comes from. So we know again that one of the one of the limitations that we have when when trying to operationally implement this, the distribution strategy that was created is time. So uh, on the one side, you want to focus on those guests that booked directly, that uh, uh, you brought in via an ad, that you brought in via a. Uh, um, marketing method and they engage with you directly but you also want to put focus on those that did not book with you directly and you want to shift that channel for their next day so again based on uh, uh, the, the cost of marketing or the cost of distribution you can start narrowing down uh, how you're going to engage those that are basically the most important ones to, to engage first based on the limitation of time and then again use the tools that technology allows you to have so that you can reach the most of them in the most efficient manner very good thank you yeah doing a time check here we're, we're winding down so the last topic we want to talk about is how do hoteliers exceed guest expectations post day you know it's it's important to remember that we touch base with customers when they are checking out to address any issues on the spot I'm sure we can all relate to this, but you know, you want to contain brush fires as early as possible. The longer you let them go, the more rampant they can become. The reality of it is the old adage, a negative review or negative word travels 10 times faster and farther than a positive one. So let's talk really quickly about post day. Shayla, if you would talk about um, how best for a property to request feedback. Well, I, I, I want to add before getting there, um, we talked about this early on in this presentation, influencers and reviews. What I think is so interesting um, about the review process or the feedback process is though you may not know who wrote that review, they feel like your mom or your sister or a trusted advisor because they just completed an experience that you yourself are considering uh, participating in. So I I think it is essential that you do request feedback. I know Estelle is going to have some things to share here about how to do that. I think commonly it is an email, uh, quick questions about how you enjoyed your stay. But I think also in that lens, once someone takes the time to review your site on your hotel's page, on an aggregator's page, you need to respond. You need to be responsive to the feedback you got, good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, your guest wants to know they were heard. Estella, do you have some further comments there? Yes, basically, you know, similar to what you were saying, Shayla, guests are going to respond and engage with you in that feedback about their stay. Even if they're responding let's say at an online travel agency, they're not gonna post about their online travel agency booking experience. They're going to post about their hotel booking experience. So just having having the 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 discipline of going and, and looking at, at the feedback that is posted, having the 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 discipline of finding what is so valuable, where guests are finding so valuable that you can then use to market or remarket the next guest that is coming or the one that has departed, that becomes a very important. It, it, again, the tools can be different uh, depending on what the technology allows or if you have a, a central reservation system integrated with your um, customer relationship management system, et cetera, you can go all the way to 
personalization. But even if you start just with segmentation, just as you segment for your rate setting strategy, segment how you're going to uh, uh, leverage the feedback that you're getting by that guest segment and how and how you're going to use that information to create uh, uh, an influence of those that are that are coming to book now or those that you want to shift from an indirect to a direct channel yeah. Estella, you know as we wind down here i um wanted to maybe see if you could speak to how a property best stays connected with a guest you know we've talked about this repeatedly there's kind of been a theme but one and done is really not what we're looking for here. We're looking for creating this very personalized relationship. Ideally, what it parlays into is repeat repeat customers. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think most properties would agree they'd love to have nothing more than a great referral source. But there's things that you have to do ahead of time to make those things happen. How is it best for a property to stay connected with their guests post stay? I one of the ways, of course, as we saw most of the audience answered is, is email. That is because it typically comes with the technology solution that, that you've adopted. And, and it's not definitely not a bad way of, of staying connected because uh, uh, it could be something that is relevant to them or it can be something that is relevant to someone they know when they've had a, when they've had a great stay. But other ways of, of staying connected is you know, just making those more targeted, making those more targeted based on what they did uh, during their stay or based on uh, either the lead time, length of stay, uh, occupancy, type of room, et cetera, that they've visited. Um, but also being able to see if you can recognize them when they come back, whether they, they registered and that you recognize them so they can sign back in when they visit your site and you can offer them beyond the room, but uh, things like additional options or uh, what is typically called service items or add-ons based or catered on their stay. So if, they, if I've stayed there before and, and there's, there's a magnificent golf course, but I, did not participate in those activities if i happen to visit your site again maybe the the add-ons or those additional services that that you serve up are not necessarily those that you would serve for someone that that would be interested in golf okay yeah mm -hmm. very interesting shayla anything that you'd uh, you'd like to throw in there honestly no stella covered it okay. i think it's i i can't agree more paying attention to the experience they had when they were with you and trying to carry that through to the next time that they come back to see you. Well, believe it or not, folks, we have, uh, we've actually come to the end of our webinar. I think we've got a few fleeting moments here. Uh, one of the things we'd love to do is, is see if anybody has any questions um, they'd like to post. I believe you can do that through your um, reservation here. If you're in the meeting, you can actually post a question we'll be able to see. Um, so if you'd like to do that now, now would be a great time to, uh, to take an opportunity to access um, these experts in the, in the industry. Uh, if not, you can see here on the slide that's being presented, we have tried to leave you with uh, their information, the best way to get a hold of them. I'm certain that they would both be more than willing to pick back up a conversation with you, you know, one-on-one -on -one after this. Uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed listening to both of these ladies. I think it's been uh, very insightful. Uh, Yes, there's a lot of work involved. I think there's no question about that. Any hotel you're on the, in the audience would probably agree to that, but I think the right work is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. um, and there are certain steps and keys that any hotel can um, take to be more successful than others when it comes to online guest experiences. Um, I do not see any questions coming in just yet. Oh, wait a minute. I do have one here. What is, ah, Estella, this might be catered to you since I think this was, the point you spoke to, what is the best company for a mobile concierge? Do you have any recommendations? Uh, I mean, it can vary. There are some out there that can simply cater to an independent hotel and brand it to them. Uh, uh, I, there are several that we work and integrate with. But it also depends if you have multi-properties, it could be something where you engage your web development company to create a concierge app 
uh, uh, for your chain. So it really depends on the side uh, on the size of the property, but there's several out there that we work with. I I think we can get a a, a list for the attendees. Okay. So I'm just curious, is that common for very interesting uh, feedback there? Is it common for any one property or collection of properties to actually develop their own, or is it more standard protocol for them to go? Try to find a vendor that offers the service for a single property is most likely to find a vendor because uh, number one the cost of development but also the adoption you know the adoption of uh, a guest to download an app for a single property versus a multi-property is going to be smaller so the return on investment for a single property to build it versus a multi-property one is is, is going to be different so that's why you know for those it there's their software as a service companies that are available okay we did actually have another question um, come in so I'll pose it to both ladies and get your get your feedback when a guest is already leaving a review with an OTA, is it okay to also request a review direct? And how would that approach be best taken? Shayla, maybe I'll start with you. Do you have any thoughts yeah. on that? It's a great question. Um, and I, I imagine that in this analogy, the guests wrote something really great. And so you want to have that be front and center, perhaps, um, on the reviews on your own site. I think when an instance like that happens, and we talked about this, personalization is key. If you're reading that on an aggregator site or an OTA site, I think it's important if it's meaningful to you that you personally reach out to request that feedback. Um, and, and maybe that's a phone call, maybe that's an email. Um, again, depending on how they connected with you, how you can connect back with them. I, I'm of the opinion there is no harm in asking. Yeah. The old adage was you miss 100 percent of the shots you never take right mm -hmm. and if they're more than willing to offer up positive feedback on a on a third party i would assume they do the same Estella, do you have any other any other insights or thoughts on that well uh, just a thought it, it, it's great to reference that review and to have them give it directly as well but there's also another valuable piece to it is that they are telling you there the value that they found on your property so take that and go and look at your descriptions and see if the descriptions speak of what guests themselves are saying they find valuable in your property. That's interesting. I, I would imagine if you get enough of those, you're going to start to see patterns develop, mm -hmm. right? And those patterns would probably tell quite a compelling story. And to your point, matching that story with what you're actually conveying, I think would only have to benefit the, the property. Correct, and it and it helps manage the expectation of what they will receive once they reach you, which is again what what we want people to get out of this time that they've invested with us. So uh, I, I think that 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 can be another piece that they can use. Okay, well, it looks like we do have one more question here. Again, I want to be sensitive to everybody's time. This one this one's intriguing to me because I know that this is probably on the front of many hoteliers' minds, and the question is simply seems to me that when people review a property, it automatically starts with a bad experience. How do we counteract that situation with reviews? Ladies, do you have, do you have thoughts on this? I, Estella, please, go first. I think responding is always the first rule. Mm -hmm. Res there, there, is, there, there are going to be bad reviews. There are going to be bad reviews that appear and I think guests understand that things happen, but how you manage them, how you manage what happens is also an important influence in that decision making. So I think responding to those is always something that you must do. It doesn't mean that you're going to convert them and then they're going to say, okay, everything was great. They might still you know, have a complaint after that, but the fact that the property responded makes the, the whoever is going to read that review next understand that they are caring for that guest and they're caring for that guest expectation, even if they were not able to satisfy them completely. Not addressing them speaks of a lack of concern. Gotcha. And I would say timeliness is a big part of that, right? When you 
when I see most reviews, they're timestamps. So I would assume mm -hmm. that, that that's actually fairly important, the prompt nature of your response. You know, if you were to receive a negative response, the last thing you want to do is not only not respond, but I think a, a, a next worst situation is waiting weeks or months before responding. I would, I would make an argument. You probably want to do it fairly quickly mm -hmm. after receiving these feedback to show people that you're sensitive to that, that feedback, um, you're willing to take action, and maybe even offer a make good of some sort, be it a a chance to redeem yourself and bring them back. Shayla, do you have any thoughts on that as well? No, I don't. Estella, it's a perfect answer. I completely agree. I think the whole point is that you need to have a conversation about that kind of um, a, a, a review or complaint so that you can address it head on. And I wholeheartedly agree. It shows that you, I mean, you can you make everybody happy 100% of the time? No. And we all, to human, to air is human. So it happens. Yes. We are all, you know, so, but to, to, to be kind and considerate and to know that you want to hear that opinion and address it, I think it's, it's huge. It speaks dividends. It says, I care about you as my guest. And this is why I want to dig in further about where we could have improved our, your experience and meet your expectations or exceed them. Yeah. Well, very good. Ladies, I want to thank you personally again for a, a wonderful uh, afternoon. It's been insightful for me. I've enjoyed this greatly. I hope the audience, um, you've taken something from this as well. The whole idea here is that we add value to you as, as business owners and, and uh, proprietors of properties. As we said, we've left this last slide up for you. If either, any of you have questions for either Shayla or Estella, there are ways to reach them. Uh, I'm sure they'll be prompt in their response. I want to thank everyone again for taking time out of their very busy schedules to join us today. We look forward to the next time. Thank you so much and have a wonderful week. Thank you.